October 27th. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts. And I'll give unto every one of you according to your works. Revelation 2, 23. Whose prerogative is it to search the heart? Who can fathom this fathomless sea of iniquity? Who can follow it in all its serpentine windings? Who can detect its deep septum? Who? I, the Lord, searches the heart. I try the reins. A mere creature, such as the denier of Christ's proper deity would make him, cannot know the heart. It is a perfection peculiar to God and must in its own nature be incommunicable, for were it communicable to a creature, it could not be peculiar to God himself. Were it possible, we say, that God should delegate the power and prerogative of searching the heart and trying the reins of the children of man to a mere created being, then it could with no propriety be said of him that he only searches the heart. And yet to Jesus does this attribute belong, Is not, then, the evidence of his deity most conclusive? Who can resist it? From the attribute of Christ what blessedness flows to the believing soul. It is at all times a consolation to him to remember that Jesus knows and searches the heart. Its iniquity he sees and subdues, for the promise is, he will subdue our iniquities. He detects some lurking evil, some latent corruption, before it develops itself in the onward departure, the overt act, he checks and conquers it. Cheering thought, may the believer say, that all my inbred evil, the hidden corruption of my heart, is known to my Savior God. Lord, I would not conceal a thought. He would cry, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there may be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. He sees, too, his own gracious work in the soul, the little spiritual life that he has breathed there, the little grace that he has implanted there, the little spark of love that he has kindled there, the faint and feeble longings after him, the inward struggles with sin the hungering and thirsting for holiness, the panting for divine conformity, all is known to Jesus. The Lord Jesus knows and recognizes his own work. The counterfeit he soon detects, the outward garb and the unhumbled spirit, the external profession and the unbroken heart escape not his piercing glance. Man may be deceived, the Lord Jesus never. We may not be able to discern between the righteousness and the wicked, between nature and grace, between the outward profession and the inward reality. But Jesus knows what is genuine and what is base, what is the mere effect of an enlightened judgment and an alarmed conscience. Psalm 